Three aspiring scientists have been crowned winners at an annual talent search competition. It's for students interested in pursuing a future in science, tech, engineering and maths or STEM. The event was organised by the Science Centre Singapore with participants tasked to solve real-life problems. And for more, we're joined by one of this year's winners, Kuei Zi'en. Zi'en, thanks very much for joining us this evening. So we understand, and I'm going to try to simplify it a little bit, the research topic was on you know, predicting more infectious virus variants for pandemic prevention uh, with the use of deep learning. Uh, so take us through what that solution was and also what inspired you to, you know, choose this problem to solve. Thank you for having me here. So we chose this research topic because we saw that there have been wave after wave of COVID-19 infections. And whenever a new variant or sub-variant like Omicron emerges, the vaccine efficacy drops and we need to develop a booster shot. So we tried to create an approach that can predict possible variants of an existing virus that might emerge in the future. So with this info, we can try to improve the vaccine production and try to preempt future outbreaks. And I think in this way, we can try to stay ahead of the constantly mutating virus. And so maybe a bit of like context setting about our approach to this problem. So um, one measure of infectivity of a virus is how strongly the virus spike protein binds to our human receptor protein. So the stronger the binding, then the more infectious it is because it can enter our body cells more easily. So we came up with a transformer neural network to measure the strength of this binding. So essentially, uh, if you're given two proteins, one virus protein, one human protein, then the transformer neural network can try to predict the strength of the binding between these two proteins. And then next, we tried to attempt a few different algorithms to computationally generate um, possible variants that might happen. And then we use the transformer neural network to output the binding strength of this variant to the human receptor. And then after that, we will select the variants with the strongest binding. So these are the variants that are more infectious and that might actually happen in the future. Right, so, and I want to take this down to a bit more of a personal level and, and maybe just talk to you a little bit about um, the kind of emotions and the kind of challenges that you faced while you know undertaking uh, this project. You know, was it a, ro a roller coaster ride, ups and downs, perhaps? Yeah, definitely. So I think the project had quite a lot of obstacles, especially at the start. So I actually did this project together with a research partner, and the both of us are from a physics background. So considering that our projects involve quite a lot of reading up on biology, on viruses and the COVID-19 virus in particular, it took us quite a lot of time at the beginning of the project to familiarize ourselves with how viruses work, to understand research papers, and then formulate a problem statement that is well thought out and a potential um, solution as well. So that was at the start. But even throughout the whole process itself, um, there were many times our neural network, our model didn't really work. It just broke down completely. So we needed to come up with like new ways to come up to solve this problem. So whether it's reading new research papers or to think of uh, more advanced techniques that we could use or to create a new model entirely, um, we had to consult our mentor for help a few times. And I think we are really grateful that our mentor was able to help us and support us throughout the whole project. Yeah. Yeah. Persistence really, I think the name of the game there. Um, what next for you then? You know, now that the project is has has been won, you know, how are you going to take this uh, uh, project to the next step? Hmm. As of now, we don't have any concrete plans for the expansion or like upskilling of our project, considering that we definitely still have some room for improvement. But I do think that it will be a great opportunity if any company or research organization is to take interest in our approach to solve this problem. And you mentioned earlier that you, you, you've you come from a physics background and then you had to do a lot of learning for this project. Mm. Uh, is that going to be, you know, the trajectory of, of your career perhaps in future or are you going to go back to, to, to your physics background perhaps? <laughs> As of now, I'm more open to different options. I think I would definitely like to consider a career in the STEM subjects, but I'm quite open to different options within the STEM field itself, whether it's computer science, physics, or even on the more bio side as well. Because I think I'm someone who really likes to see how 
um, the STEM subjects can be applied to things outside of STEM to try to um, improve the lives of different communities. Yeah. Right, real world solutions for real world problems. Thanks so much uh, for joining us, Zuen. We've been speaking there with Kuei Zuen, one of the winners of the National STEM Talent Search 2022.